Uh, here is a photograph of uh, Mr. Me here, the Ghana Police Service, and uh, the unknown man uh, called Henry Fitz. Well, he says he's quite well known. So uh, this is this is the story. Uh, Mr. Me here has reported Henry Fitz and his accomplices, his assignees, to the Ghana Police Service, who have. Uh, upon the reports uh, issued a summons against Henry Fitz and uh, some of the people. We're going to go into the details. All right. What did we put out in our flyer today? Here it is. We're going to show it right now. And uh, mind you, after this, I'll be doing it in Akan and also Linga so people can get the explanation of the law correctly. All right. Uh, so this is what we said. Sewa Ami here makes a bold effort to recover her image by using a complaint, by issuing a complaint and obtaining a summons from the police against those who mounted a dastardly effort to ruin her reputation, including one Henry Fitz. The accused persons are to answer for allegations of extortion and unwarranted release of videos, setting up the best, the biggest criminal trial of the Fourth Republic, a trial whose potential social media following can be compared only to the election petition 2013. Tonight, we analyze the story, assess the charges, and explain the law in three and uh, in three as well. We'll do it in Ghana as well. You can't miss it. You know that uh, when you go to uh, um, Europe and you are learning, and you tell them you are from Ghana, and they say, do you speak Tui? That's what they say. They are not able to say Tui. Do you speak Tui? <laughs> so tonight, we are going to speak Tui. Okay. Uh, yeah, so over with. Now, let's get the facts. This is Sewa Ame here, whom, who is quite well known to uh, many people. So a short video purporting to depict Sewa Mehe and another person by name Henry Fitz made the rounds online. I didn't see the video, I just saw the image, the screenshot image. So it is said, uh, according to the story uh, from social media, that the allegations are all substantiated. But it says the gentleman in the video uh, was taking care of Sewa. They were in a relationship, apparently. Uh, some monies had been mentioned, apparently, that she was, he was supposed to remunerate her a certain amount of money on a daily basis. All of these are allegations that we cannot now establish because it's one person saying we don't know. But this is what Mr. Fitz is, uh, is reported to have said uh, about her relationship with the lady. Uh, it is also said that uh, Miss Amir here was at, and, and the, for, to that one, there are photographs and videos, so that's verifiable. She and uh, another person attended um, the wedding of Mr. Fitz. Mr. Fitz had conducted a wedding, a very plush wedding at Royal Sinchi Hotel uh, in the Eastern region here in Ghana. It is said that uh, Ms. Amihe and another person were invited to um, MC the wedding. And those who went to the wedding saw Ms. Amihe and another person emceeing the wedding. I wasn't at the wedding. It is also said that soon after the wedding, Ms. Amihe became friends with uh, Mr. Fitz and the rest, as they say, is history. But inside the history is the detail. Uh, the detail then is that they sort of got engaged in the, I don't mean engagement, but they connected with each other and they were dating of sorts. Okay, so whilst dating, they, were, they are reported to have gotten very intimate with each other. And uh, whilst they got intimate with each other, they, they got also crazy a little bit, which is allowed. I mean, everyone, oh, I, I can't say everyone, but people, when they get intimate, they get crazy. Okay, but it's indoors. They get crazy indoors. They get intimate indoors. They don't get crazy at the Accra Sports Stadium. But they don't get crazy at the University of Ghana sports stadium. They get crazy indoors. So they did get crazy. In the crazy moment, apparently, they filmed their conduct. Their private conduct was filmed. Every, the allegation further says, the report further says, that the filming was occasioned uh, by Sewa Meher. Uh, but people who know her say it was done at the behest of Mr. Fitz. It was Mr. Fitz who invited her to video. Apparently, it will not be the first time he's inviting a lady to video an intimate expression with him something like that okay so the police on the 8th of april filed charges against persons believed to have jointly operated towards extorting money from the complainant okay the complainant here is sewa here so just to correct what has been happening sewa here has not sued henry fitz she's made a complaint to the police so she is the complainant and the police have issued a summons it's going to be a criminal process uh, so the difference is that if you look at this the, the one between the lady the bank manager and the lady who took a car or something like that. That's, that's a suit. That's a civil action. That's a suit from the, I don't know who she, I think it was a lady. Who sued? The lady. I think it was the lady who sued to keep the car. That's a civil action. No police, nobody goes to jail. So I'm here so it's a different matter. She hasn't sued. No. She has reported Henry to the police. It is the police who are conducting their investigations. And after preliminary investigations, they have issued a summons. Our purpose tonight is to look at the summons that the police have issued and go as into detail to tell you viewers what is likely to happen and what is likely not to happen. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to do tonight. So this is, uh, this is uh, uh, the 8th of April. The police then uh, came in with this suit. Let's go through it. Okay. Um, the case is entitled The Republic. Now, The Republic is the title of every criminal case. It doesn't mean that the Republic of Ghana is siding with Sewa Amir. No, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> Nobody should say that. It doesn't mean that at all. The Republic versus just means that it's a criminal matter and uh, the um, accused persons, as we call them, the accused persons have been reported by somebody. If somebody comes to my house and uh, uh, steals my mobile phone and I see that he stole my mobile phone, and I don't have the power to chase him. I just go to the police and say that somebody brought his car to my house. The car is car number so and so. He stole my mobile phone. But where's the evidence of it? There's a camera in my house that shows it. I give that evidence to the police. They will not take that hook, line, and sinker. They will now investigate it. If they come to the conclusion that, in fact, the person did steal uh, my mobile phone, they will now issue a summons. And it will be called the Republic versus uh, uh, Kofi Menu or the Republic versus... Uh, my friend Amma, who is watching, or the Republic versus somebody. Okay, so the Republic versus doesn't mean that the whole state of Ghana is behind Sawa here. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that she has made a complaint to the police about something that somebody has done to her, which is criminal, and so the police will be prosecuting under the auspices of the Attorney General pursuant to Article 88 of the 1992 Constitution. So let's move on. All right, so uh, the Republic versus Edem Savia Keti. I don't know who he is. He's described in there. And then there's Candilov Kwachi, Kwachewa Abebio. And there is Henry Amponsan. He is the key protagonist known as Henry Fitz. And he is said to be at large. So when the police issue a summons against you, they expect you to come and write a statement. And uh, when we explain in you, you would hear me say something like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'll be doing that very soon. Stay tuned. You get that as well. So uh, when, the, when the prosecution is occasioned against you, you have to come and write a statement. The police will give you a statement to write. If you do not write a statement, if you do not comply, the matter will go to court. If you do not comply, the court will rule against you. If you do not comply, a bunch warrant will be issued against you. If you do not comply, you will go to jail. So Henry Fitz will have to comply at some point. He'll have to write a statement. I, I'm sure he has a lot to say. He's already been saying it. So he's, he's going to write a statement. So that's how it is. When it is like this, you, you are supposed to write a statement. So they don't find you, they move to the next stage. They're going to do a court summons. They don't find you, they move to the next stage. They're going to issue bench warrants. They don't find you, they're going to arrest you. They arrest you with a bench warrant, they'll bring you to the court, and then they will pronounce a sentence on you. That's how it works. So it's going to be, it's going to be uh, more interesting than that. All right, let's move on. The statement of offense includes the following. Conspiracy to commit crime. This is uh, the offense that is being alleged that they committed. Conspiracy to commit crime. Let me explain to you why conspiracy comes in. Conspiracy will always be part of any charge sheet. So long as the key actors, um, the purported criminal activity was conducted by more than one person. Once there's more than one person inside, the conspiracy charge will come. The conspiracy will make your punishment severe because it will say conspiracy to doing X and doing X. Doing X alone is an offense that may take you to jail. But when there's conspiracy, there'll be more punishment to it. So as soon as the police find that whatever has, been, has happened, has happened among uh, more than one person, it will be determined as conspiracy. So conspiracy will be the first charge. So this is normal. Uh, let's, let's keep explaining as we go on. Conspiracy to commit a crime, namely non-consensual sharing of intimate image. That's the crime that they committed. They committed a crime, and they're going to, we're going to look at the crime in details as well. Non-consensual sharing of intimate image. That's the crime they committed. And then uh, that is contrary to Section 23 of the Criminal Offenses Act 1960, Act 29, as amended. And then the more important uh, the law that they may have been violated, which we're going to deal with tonight, is Section 6712 of the Cyber Security Act. That's the big one. The cyber security as a, is a big one. The cyber security has suggests that you cannot do cyber, conduct cyber bullying by publishing videos that I don't want you to publish. Publishing videos of me that are this, that are going to go into all of those details. So hold on, let's get into the next page of the slide. Particulars of the offense. Adam Savia Keti, age 29, he's a filmmaker. Uh, two, Candilov Kwachiwa Abebio, she's 31. He's a trader. Henry Amponsa uh, at Henry Fitz. He's at large. So they, they have not seen him for him to tell them what he is. That's why, he's, that's why they don't write whether he's a, a teacher, he's a nurse, or whether he's a doctor. 
whatever Henry Fitz is, it will be found out when Henry Fitz comes to the, the police station and is asked that, what do you do? And then he will write that, I am Henry Fitz. You go and see uh, a police officer there standing behind the counter and you say, are you Mr. Henry Fitz? Okay, so fill the form. How old are you? Then he will say this. And then, what do you do for a living? And then he says, I'm a trader. Then he write the trader down. So the reason why Henry Fitz, uh, people are speculating all sorts of things that Henry Fitz doesn't have a profession. That's why they didn't write it. No, it's because they haven't found him. He is at large. Okay, let's move on. This is what they are accusing them of. For that you, on or before the 3rd of December, 2023, at Accra, in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this circuit court, I should add, did act together with a common purpose to commit crime, namely non-consensual sharing of intimate images. So that's the main offense. There's extortion also in there. But this is the first offense. They conspired uh, in December 2023 to uh, share non-consensual images of another person being the complainant. Let's move on. Statement of offense. It says, non-consensual sharing of intimate image contrary to section 67 of Cyber Security Act 2020. So it is said that the three accused persons had conspired to share images of the complainant uh, contrary to section 67.1 of the Cyber Security Act uh, Act 1038, which is very recent, passed recently. At the end of the day, we'll tell you why the Parliament passed the Cyber Security Act. Let's, let's move on. Particulars of the offence. Um, um, that is, is, is a repetition, that the same thing, the two of them... Uh, okay, so let, let, this is a bit more, let me read it. For that you, on the 3rd of December 2023, in Accra, in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did intentionally distribute prohibited visual recording of one Sewa may hear without her consent on social media handles. That's the detail of the offense. That the three of them, Henry Fitz and the two others, uh, in Accra in December 2023, uh, intentionally distributed, prohibited visual recording of Sewa may hear without her consent on social media. Okay, counts three, statement of offense. Sexual extortion, contrary to Section 66.1 of Cyber Security Act. And we're going to learn uh, the details of that offense as well. It says as follows, the three of them, Henry Fitz and two others. This is what it says. For that you, on the 3rd of December 2023, at Accra in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did, with an intent to coerce Sewa here to pay a cash sum of 5,000 Ghana cities to you, did threaten to distribute prohibited visual recording on the social media handles if the said amount was not paid to you. Mm. It's getting interesting. But why are they demanding 5,000 CDs? Why not 2,000, why not 1,000, why not 10,000, why not 40,000? Where's the figure 5,000 coming from? I'm not sure about it. As I read on, you will see it's figure 20,000 also image. Let's go on. All right. Sexual extortion, contrary to section 66 of cybersecurity. This is the next one. Okay. For the three of them, Henry Fitz and the two others. This is what they were reported to have done. For that you, on the 2nd April 2024 at Accra, in the greater Accra region, and within the jurisdiction of this court, did, with an intent to coerce Sewa here to pay a cash sum of 20,000 CDs to you, this threatened, uh, you did threaten to distribute her prohibited visual recording on the social media handles if the said amount of money was not paid to you. We will therefore assume, we will assume that um, because the video, as has been seen by people now on social media, for which reason this summons has been issued by the police, that the video um, uh, did not emerge in December 2023 because, as it turns out, it would appear that Sewa Meher did oblige the payment of the money. So it would appear that Ms. Sewa Meher obliged to pay at least 25,000 Ghana CDs to Henry Fitz and the two others who were threatening her that they will share the video if she doesn't pay the money. That's what the summon seems to suggest. Let's... Okay, now we're going to understand the law. So we, so we, get, we get the offense. Sewa Meher has gone to police to complain. But these people have shared my videos. Uh, they had come to me in December and said that they wanted 5,000. I must have given it to them. Uh, they have come again and said they wanted 20,000. I gave it to them. It would appear that at some point, he was unwilling to continue to pay. 
And so they decided to publish their videos. But there's more to that. There's a lot more to that. It's not as simple as that. Let's get to the details. Okay. Non-consensual sharing of intimate image. One, a person shall not, with intent to, cause serious emotional distress, intentionally distribute or intentionally cause another person to distribute the intimate image or prohibited visual recording of another identifiable person without the consent of the person depicted in the intimate image and in respect of which there was a reasonable expectation of privacy both at the time of the creation of the image or the visual recording and at the time of the offense was committed. Let's break this down beautifully. A person shall not. Okay, so Paul Adomotri shall not with intent to cause serious emotional distress to Amagana, intentionally, deliberately distribute or intentionally cause Kwekwa uh, Preku to distribute the intimate image or prohibited visual recording of Amagana to uh, Evans Mensa without the consent of Amagana who is depicted in the intimate image and in respect of which there was a reasonable expectation of privacy. This is very loaded. Let's get it down. Let's break it down. So it says that if I go and distribute images of another person, Amagana, to one person, the law, however, says intentionally, deliberately, because it could be inadvertent. I can send my video to you inadvertently. Haven't that happened before? You send a video, say, oh, I'm sorry. Did, what, what did you see? Say, then somebody calls, hey, Charlie, watch your phone. No, you are pressing, pressing something. Some video has come to me. Then I say, hey, I'm sorry. What's it? especially the group chat? I have had that many, many, many times. I'm sending something to one of my children. I put it on Presec 1991 platform. Somebody says, hey, you the crazy. What you put on it? I say, what is it? Say, hey. So the word intentionally here is meant to manage that process. So it will avail as a defense to anyone. If he says that, yes, the video got out, but it wasn't intentional, that will be a defense. Because the law says intentionally distribute or intentionally cause another person to distribute. The law qualifies the mental state of the person who is distributing. And that must be assessed by evidence to determine whether he did it deliberately or he did it inadvertently. That's very important. I'm not so sure why they put the law like that because this is a very sensitive matter. So I'm guessing that Parliament should have made the law straightforward, similar to defamation. If you read the laws on defamation, publication is publication. This is intentionally, unintentionally. You can bring it up in the trial as a defense, but the law shouldn't circumscribe that because if the law says intentionally, and I say I did it unintentionally, it's a mental situation that the court must assess. And if the courts are assessing a mental situation with the criminal standard of beyond reasonable doubt, it is unlikely that the court will come to the conclusion that beyond reasonable doubt, what is in my head was as intentional. How do you know that? It's in my head. I said it is not intentional. You ask me what are the circumstances. I show you. The circumstances are that I didn't intend to. It was just a mistake. If I say it's a mistake, I'm out. Because the law says intentionally. I have a problem with the law. I think parliament should have another look at it. This intentionally, intentionally they put in here, it is reducing the prosecution's power to be able to convict beyond reasonable doubt. It is. It is definitely doing that. Unless you can tell, and it is so, especially in the case like Sewa here, where the matter is very complicated. I'll give you a situation that's not complicated. A member of parliament for X goes to have an encounter with a secretary of somebody at Ministry of Defense. He doesn't know that he has been filmed by the lady. He doesn't know. And then the next day, he gets a call from Joy FM. Uh, Sir, we have received a video of you. Were you in Takrade at the weekend? You know, policians are going to be very... I mean, I was Takrade, so what? Don't ask me. I can go anywhere. That's how they're going to respond. I've been doing this work for 20 years. I know how they respond. And then he said, polician, calm down. Mr. Honorable, calm down, calm down. We have received a video of you uh, in an intimate situation in Takrade. Then he panics. He says, where? He says, oh, it's here. Can I send it to you? He says, yeah, send it to me. He sees it. He says, but where did you get this from? He says, well, journalists don't disclose their source. Is that you? Can you confirm that is you in the video? He says, yes, that is me in the video. And I know the lady. And I was with her. That one is straightforward. The honorable didn't record it. The lady must have 
even not being the one to record it. Maybe they put a camera in the room where he was. He didn't know. He's, he's uh, uh, NDC man. MPP are looking for him. They knew he was going to Takrade. He's a Republican. Democrats are looking for him. They knew he was going to Birmingham. They put a camera there. Whatever. All of that can happen. That's what this law is supposed to protect. So maybe the lady didn't film it. But she was directed to go and conduct the affairs in a place where cameras were already placed. It happens in politics. So, and in business too. So, that kind of situation, when it's published, they are going straight for the lady. Because this man didn't film it. The lady can say all sorts of things. But this, I want me here, one is more complicated. Why? Because the victim, can you give me back Sawa and uh, I'll come back. Give me Sawa and the police and Henry Fitz. I, I want to do an illustration so people can understand. Uh, I'll, I'll finish quickly, viewers. Don't worry, I'll finish quickly. Uh, okay, so, that, yes, great. The victim here, so I'm here, the victim, is also the one who filmed it. That's getting complicated. Keep session 67, I'll come there. The victim, Ms. Amehia, is the victim, clearly. But she's the one who is said to have filmed it. And we don't know whether she did. She may come and say she denied it. She hasn't spoken about that. But Henry Fitz is very firm on that position, that it was, it was Sewa Amehia who filmed it. And she has not yet come to deny or contradict that anyway. She may, I don't know. But for now, we can work with what we have. If she is the one who filmed it, and Henry Fitz alleges that Sewa Amehia is the one who sent him the video, in a situation where he said he, was, he wanted out of the relationship and she was trying to coerce him to keep in the relationship, so sent him this glorious video uh, which will excite any man and uh, perhaps ask him that, do you want to get out of this relationship? Are you sure? He, may, he must have said, okay, he doesn't want to get out anymore. Whatever. But the victim is the one who filmed it. And the victim is the one who first transferred it. How are we going to deal with this matter? I'm not the court, I'm not the police, but the prosecution will have to climb all of these hurdles. Remember, the prosecution are going to prosecute with a very high standard of conviction, which in law is called beyond reasonable doubt. I'll be explaining it later on in other languages, don't worry. Beyond reasonable doubt. The other, the other standard is, is, is different. I won't talk about that now. But in criminal standard, it's beyond reasonable doubt. How are you going to establish beyond reasonable doubt that it was Mr. Fitz? who had the mental element and intentionally distributed it, intentionally caused another person to distribute it, intentionally, intentionally, intentionally. I'm not so sure whether the law is fortified in favor of victims. But this is going to be very complicated. That's why we think it's going to be the biggest trial. She is complaining, but she is the, she is the videographer. The complainant is also the videographer. The complainant is also participated in the distribution distributed it to him. But there, there's something in the law that protects her because it says, let's get back to the law. Let's get back to it. Let me read that. Yes, great. Okay. A person shall not, with intent to cause serious emotional distress, intentionally distribute or intentionally cause another person to distribute the intimate image or prohibited visual recording of another identifiable person without the consent of the person depicted in the intimate image and in respect of which this is the critical part. In respect of which there was a reasonable expectation of privacy both at the time of the creation of the image or the visual recording and at the time of the offense. So this line here, reasonable, can I underline it? Uh, I can't? Okay, well, all right, let me, let me move on. That there was a reasonable expectation of privacy. This is what will save Sewa Mehir's transferring the video to Henry Fitz. This one protects her that she, there was, and there has to be, a reasonable expectation of privacy because the two of them had had an encounter, an intimate encounter. It was private. She videoed the intimate encounter. It was private. And so she has a reasonable expectation to expect that the video that I'm sending to you, Mr. Henry, is private between us. She doesn't expect that Henry will intentionally distribute or Henry will intentionally cause another person to distribute. If Henry says, yes, it has been, but it's not my intention. Already, get me the photographs of them again. Already, the story that Henry Fitz is suggesting is that when the video was sent to him, it was on his phone. He says, and I don't know whether he has evidence to show, he says, he has two phones, one of which is what uh, Madame Sewa sent the, the, the video to him. 
But those both phones are lost. That there's record of the phones getting missing. That he came to some party at East Legon something something. And he was talking to somebody and put the phones on the person's car. He realized later that he didn't have his phones with him. He says video evidence shows that he deposited the two phones on the vehicle. And then the vehicle sped off after he had finished talking to the guy in the vehicle. He realized that I've left my phones on that vehicle, but the guy had gone. They were unable to retrieve it some one way or the other. That is what he says. Now, those things he's saying will cover him in the intentionally. That's why I'm worried about intentionally being in the law. Because if that is so, then he didn't intend to publish. Yes, you send the videos to, to, to him. It was on his phone. And you are protected, of course. So why is protected? Because he said a, a reasonable expectation of privacy. He is also protected because intentionally protects him. He says, I didn't intentionally do it. And he goes on to say that, oh, but I have other videos. If I really wanted to do this, these are the other videos I would have published. During the trial, he may present the videos to the court. If the prosecution asks him that, do you have the videos where you claim that you, because you have to ground your case and you have to deposit the doubts so that the prosecution is unable to prove beyond reasonable doubt. You have to show the doubt. What is the doubt? Oh, but I have videos. The court will say, his lawyer will ask the court, can, can uh, the accused person show the video to the court? And the video, that will not count as publication. No, it won't. They may ask the journalist to leave and do it in camera. So the journalists will leave, but the concern will be there. You know that because the lawyers are there, they will be there. So the journalists will take their bag and they will happily leave because they want the thing to be shown because they will hear it. So he will show that I have this video. Look at, it was a show video number, exhibit uh, number five from PW1. They will show it. His video is there. If he has it, they will say, okay, show the next video. After he has showed five videos, the judge may say, it's okay, don't show any more videos. And then he will say that, yes, my Lord, this is the video I have. So if I really had intention to cause her emotional distress, I won't be showing the video that she sent to me. That's nothing. This is major. But I don't want to do that. So I didn't deliberately send that video. I, the video went out from my phone, everything, but it is unintentional because the law says intentionally. That's going to be complicated. That's why I call this the biggest criminal trial happening. It's not simple. It's going to be very complicated. So I don't know whether that's why he's smiling this way, but all his photographs, he's smiling like that. But Sewatu is smiling nicely and I'm, I'm happy about the way uh, she's taking all of this. So this is the situation. This is what the law says. This is what is going to confront the law. Once he's found and he writes a statement, this is what is going to confront the law. The police are going to be confronted with They have to go to court and prove beyond reasonable doubt. The, the lawyers from the police have to show this. Okay, so they're asking me to go on. Um, uh, where was I? Yes, so reasonable expectations. So viewers, let me know what you think. Those of you who are lawyers, write to us. Good evening, Ghana official on Facebook. Tell us what you think about this. I'm not done at all. We're going to the other matters, but I'll be done soon. Okay. This is a extortion. Those who took money from her, that's more straightforward than the publication. Taking the money is more straightforward. If they did take the money, there will be evidence. If they did tell her why they are taking the money, there will be evidence. That's directly straightforward. Let's see what it is. 66, sexual extortion. One, a person shall not threaten to distribute by post, email, text, or transmit by electronic means or otherwise a private image or moving images of another person engaged in sexual, sexually explicit conduct with the specific intent to A, harass, threaten, coerce, intimidate, or exert any undue influence on the person, especially to extort money or other consideration or to compel the victim to engage in unwarranted sexual activity. Okay. For the purpose of subsection 1 and 2, an intimate image may include a depiction in a way that the genital or anal region of another person is bare or covered only by underwear or the breast below the top of the areola that is either uncovered or clearly visible through clothing. A person who contravenes subsection 1 or 2 commits an offense and is liable on summary conviction to a certain number of, uh, uh, is liable on conviction to a certain number of, uh, of years, etc., etc. Hmm. I've already done 30 minutes on this matter. I thought I'll do 15 minutes. So this is interesting. The image they are talking about 
If the person is in a ninth wear or some kind of image so that you can see his body, I think it relates more to our women, doesn't it? Uh, very little for men, but more to our women because they are describing all of that. We, we have been debating in the studio whether we should show you a photograph of an image uh, that we can depict what it means by areola and all of that. Okay, uh, I hope this image works and uh, I hope people don't get offended. Can I write on it? Uh, tell, ask them. Uh, so the, the, the point being made over here, uh, the point being made over here, uh, no, sorry, uh, can I? No, it doesn't work. Okay, so the point being made over here, viewers, is that uh, uh, with, uh, I'm sorry to show this to you, but so when, if you have a photograph of an image, anything below here is offensive to the law. Anything above here is not offensive to the law. Anything below here is offensive to the law in, in respect of a woman. In respect of a man, you can take it off, please. In respect of a woman, it is, um, in respect of a man, it is the, the genitalia. So that is the image. So when the image is showed in the court, it will be looked at whether the image has uh, passed the test of failing the law. That's interesting, isn't it? It's ironic. You pass the test of failing the law.